Hey, what's up? It's me, Trent, from The Perfect Shuffle. This last weekend, I went to a garage sale, and I bought a mystery box of over 150 cassette tapes. Now, instead of reviewing all of that music, which would take absolutely forever, I think I'm just going to tell you about what I found and what I thought was interesting, and hopefully you find it interesting, too. I split it up into a few different categories so that it's a little bit more digestible and we can take a look at what type of music was actually in this box. The largest category of tapes I found by a mile was mostly white guys, all solo acts. I love the way these tapes laid out create a yearbook of sorts. Just a yearbook of white guys. One notable outlier in this category was Emilio, who is apparently willing to give me my drink on the house. Thankfully, I'm not a woman, otherwise this proposition would be slightly terrifying. He also has at least one album of Spanish music, which is excellent. Sammy Kershaw had an album called Politics, Religion, and Her, which are the three things you shouldn't bring up in conversation at Thanksgiving dinner. I was unaware that Sammy Kershaw was so successful having two number one hits. Many of these artists are probably successful in their own way, but I have so little interest in country music, I have never heard of most of these names. Tracy Lawrence's I See It Now was still wrapped, and brags the singles Hillbilly with a Heartache and God Made Woman on a Good Day. Michael White is mainly a writer for other country singers, but his album Familiar Ground has some odd color choices, leading me to wonder if I should be reading it as Familiar Grun. Dude Mowry understood something that some of these other singers really did not. The art of the stage name. Dude Mowry is so much more interesting than Daniel Mowry. Jim Lauderdale has won a couple of Grammys, but those came long after his debut, Planet of Love, which has me wondering what kind of plants grow on this planet. Doug Stone may have been incredibly successful in country music, but he also had a role in the 1995 movie Gordy. Gordy was just an ordinary little piglet. Everybody. Give me a good night kiss. That was a sweet kiss. There are some songs from that hit film right here. Joe Nichols showed he knows exactly where to go for a good time on his debut album that boasts the single Walmart Parking Lot Social Club. Jason. Jason. Jason! Rick Trevino may seem like your classic country artist, but his debut album saw him use the name Rick Trevino, and it was almost entirely in Spanish. Unfortunately, Rick doesn't speak Spanish. His label made him record his first album as a Spanish language country album, which seems pretty racist to me. The next category is guy groups. There were so many groups of guys, and I found it interesting how goofy some of these albums could be. It's just like when I get together with the boys, things can get kinda silly. One interesting standout from this category is the debut album from the band Chance. This was Chance's only album. But gosh darn it, they're happy to be here. Perfect Strangers album titled You Have the Right to Remain Silent makes me feel like I was trying to loot the local Wrangler's store and I am now subject to a citizen's arrest. The next category is the ladies. I feel like the ladies take their musical endeavors much more seriously. Their album covers give you the sense that they mean business and that things are going to get real. One notable album from this group comes from one Maureen McCormick. 
Maureen was best known for her role as Marsha Brady in The Brady Bunch, but released one solo album, as seen here. She would later go on to be on the TV show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. The next category is Spanish Language. There were a good number of Spanish language albums in here, and I'm sure there's a good range of styles. This is another area where I know hardly anything about these artists, which makes it more fascinating for me. Apparently there was a trend back in the day where the label would have artists record their English language music in Spanish. I ended up with two, one a Spanish version of Boys to Men Evolution, and the second a compilation called The Stars in Spanish, which has a lot of big artists singing in their best bad Spanish. This is Ricky Martin's second album, Me Amaras, and I can't help but love the long hair that matches the long earring. Luis Miguel is one of the most famous Latin singers of all time. He has a show on Netflix that depicts a dramatized version of his life and career. I absolutely love the look this guy has. I feel like I'm in the movie Zoolander and he's one of the models and I'm just saying he's so hot right now. The next category is Christmas albums. There were a good number of Christmas albums and about half of them were called Country Christmas. I guess it's just too good of an alliteration to pass up. Two tapes were Christmas compilations made especially for the beauty brand Avon. Not sure why they needed their own tapes, but these songs are probably guaranteed to sell the most foundation. Zamfir is known as the master of the pan flute, and listening to him play Christmas music is otherworldly, I'm sure. His name is Zamfir, master of the pan flute. The next category is Navidad. A good number of the Christmas albums were also Spanish language albums as well. I don't have much to say about these except they seem to celebrate a Christmas that is much warmer. The one tape that stood out to me in this category was Navidad Total, a Europop electronica album of Christmas music. The album artwork on Apple Music is very tame, but I love the look of this cyborg Santa mannequin. The last general category are tapes that I would define as hippie tapes. They're all a little bit more atmospheric and focused on the earth. Earthrise is an outlier in the hippie tapes. It is actually a benefit album for the rainforest and has a lot of big stars of the time. It's sad to think that a time when all we had to worry about was the rainforest being destroyed was actually simpler. Moving on, these are some albums that I thought had pretty funny album covers. Alabama and the Judds, a collaboration of two huge groups in their own rights, but this album cover just shows us what haircuts we all felt were totally cool and socially acceptable in 1991. The Bellamy Brothers have had huge success in country music and to this date have released more than 50 albums, but this picture looks like the brother on the right blows a lot of hot air considering all his facial hair looks like it is repelled by his mouth, and the brother on the left looks like he is silently crying out for help. Clinton Gregory calls this album Master of Illusion, and to prove it, he is playing his fiddle for a bobcat in the snowy desert. Where are his legs? Perhaps they were only an illusion all along. Jay Perez is known by his fans as The Voice, but this album cover does a lot of speaking for him. He's rocking an elementary school teacher's vest and some pants that accentuate a few too many curves. The ghostly shadow of a woman with a black eye in the background makes us wonder exactly what kind of things Jay has witnessed. These are some of Joe Diffie's most successful albums, and I absolutely love his look. This guy wasn't afraid to wear the blonde stash proudly, and he just seems so happy. 
This is a guy that I would have loved to be friends with. Joe L. is another prolific artist with over 30 albums to date. This is a guy who absolutely loves his accordion. Nobody has ever looked so confident and tough holding an accordion as Joe L. does right here. The Kentucky Headhunters must have had a far different definition of the word rave than I do. The Ozark Mountain Daredevils were originally called Cosmic Corn Cob and his amazing Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Today, their fans call them the Ducks for some reason. This album looks like the type of abstract art that was secretly painted by a really smart elephant. I don't have any jokes to make about these albums. I just thought they all had good and interesting artwork compared to the rest of the albums I ended up with. Finally, some artwork that isn't just a picture of the artists. This is spacey, but simple. It may not embody what the music is like, but that's okay with me. Lone Star has created a really cool look with this album art. It definitely sets you up for what you're about to hear. The Pirates of the Mississippi. Originally, the We Don't Want a Freaking Record Deal band. No, really, that was their original name. Has the album artwork here that looks classic, but it does show the limitations of the cassette tape format as far as our work goes. This is tiny and probably much less impactful than the CD. The Bama Band has some artwork here that I think anyone with an Astro Van would be proud to have spray painted on the side of their vehicle. The Cars have some of the most famous and eye-catching album artwork of all time, and this is no exception. Apparently they had a knack for the visual element because the music video for You Might Think won Video of the Year at the MTV Music Video Awards in 1984. The Dillards played a family on The Andy Griffith Show. That's a non-related fact. This artwork is really nice, beautiful, and memorable. The Tractors is a great band name, and I love how they made a tractor look kind of epic. I'm in favor of more tractor-related album art. This was the only album by Trader Price, and yes, I know it's a weird portrait photo of them in a room that is covered in one giant bedsheet, but I can't help but enjoy the southwestern imagery that forms the border. That really redeems the artwork for me. These are tapes that I found interesting for one reason or another, but not for any of the other reasons I've mentioned so far. Don McLean is the American Pie guy, and even though he kept putting out other music, he never seemed to be able to get away from American Pie. Love Tracks came out a decade after American Pie, and still, ten years after that, American Pie was re-released as a single. Four is the album Patrick Bateman famously raves about on American Psycho before he, well, goes all American Psycho on that guy. You like Huey Lewis on the news? It's a good album. Livin' La Vida Loca was obviously a huge song, and for some reason, this album artwork really brings up some long-lost memories from my childhood. I can't lie, though, the version by Puss in Boots and Donkey from Shrek will always be the one that comes to my mind first. I couldn't get this Ray Kennedy cassette out of the case. It had been so badly warped that the tape is stuck in there forever. I thought it was ironic that such a disfigured casing held an album called What A Way To Go. Skinnered Friends is a compilation of music from friends of the band Leonard Skinnered. I just thought it was funny how committed they were to the whole goofy spelling scheme thing. The word friends doesn't quite work out like I think they wanted it to. Timothy P and the Rural Route 3 did not see much commercial success, but this box did have two albums signed by Timothy P himself. In each autograph he leaves a simple howdy as a greeting. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what I'm doing here, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, check the links below for playlists of my best of 2019, as well as best of 2020, and also check the link for my new podcast, Music Meritocracy, which is pretty interesting and hopefully you'll like. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. I had fun doing it. I'm Trent Windsor. This is The Perfect Shuffle.